Patch 1.8 is coming with a whole lot of balance changes. Gloves, for instance, will now be rolling with weapon damage rolls in percentages instead of the flat weapon damage we have right now. There is also the word of stamina being buffed back to 30 health per stamina point. Hipfire is being adjusted as well. They're removing the reticle from it and making the turn speed even slower. And that's not even all of it. All of these changes are, in my opinion, very, very good. It means that high rate of fire weapons will not be as dominant anymore. It means that we'll have more build diversity and it hopefully also means that we get a little bit less of that chicken dancing. And to me, these things are as important as the map expansion itself, if not more important. So if you're asking me if I'm optimistic about the next update, yeah, definitely. Now, as somebody that theory crafts a lot, as somebody that's already looking to create a new best in slot guide, you know, as somebody like me, I've already been busy figuring out how to get the most stats on your character in the most efficient way. And I'm going to make a video about all that stuff very soon as well. But unlike before, I wanted to take a different approach to it for patch 1.8. You know, what I would usually do is I would just release my video at the end of the PTS or just before the end of the PTS when everything is pretty much set in stone already so that everybody can prepare and know what they're going to have to go for before the patch goes live. And I'm still going to do that. However, this time with this video, I'm also going to do it the other way around and talk about the stats and the values, the ones that are overperforming or underperforming for that matter, and explain why and how. Basically, I'm going to tell you what to take and what not to take, not because I want you to get the best build but because i still think there's a chance for the developers to adjust these things so we can end up with a more balanced patch overall i have three major topics that i want to cover with this video the first one is skill haste i believe that skill haste is going to overperform very heavily in 1.8 the second thing i want to talk about is headshot damage in pvp which i think is currently underperforming and last up i want to also look at the remaining underperforming stat rolls on gear such as enemy armor damage on the knee pads the crit chance on the gear mods, the all resist rolls in general, things that you typically never want to pick, not because the stat in itself is bad, but because the rolls on the gear are in too low amounts to justify taking it. There's going to be a lot of numbers in this video as well. If you want to jump to any particular part of the video, there will be a timestamp in the description box down below. However, I cannot guarantee that you'll get the whole picture if you skip from topic to topic, because I will be referring to different things back and forth throughout the video, so uh, just, uh, just keep that in mind. Anyway, enough talking, let's get to the first topic on the list, which is skill haste. Before we actually get the skill haste though, we have to look at what the developers are doing with 1.8 already. First and foremost, the buff to stamina. Now for those that are unaware, stamina is most likely going to get buffed again in 1.8. It's going to go from 15 health per stamina point to 30 health per stamina point, which again, it is a very good thing for the game because it basically means that we have no dead main stats anymore. It's going to be just as good to get stamina right now instead of electronics as well, which in 1.6 and 1.7, it wasn't really the case. However, buffing back stamina up to 30 health per stamina point, it also means that health rolls on gear, if they stay unchanged of course, will automatically become less strong as well. This is because all the power, all the stat rolls in the division, they are relative. If a health roll of 16,600 on for example the chest piece gave the player 1106 worth of stamina points in patch 1.7, because 1 point of stamina gave the player 15 health, then if we up that stamina value to 30 health per stamina point, that means that the health roll will only give us 553 points worth of stamina now. Health is easier to come by and thus health rolls they're gonna lose some value. Now should the developers increase the health rolls on our gear then? No, not really. Uh, in patch 1.6 and in patch 1.7, health was already a pretty dominant stat because it gave the player so much value. And with 30 health per point of stamina scaling, the health rolls are going to fall more in line with the rest of the rolls. So it's actually a very good thing that health is going to be less important. Another topic I also mentioned earlier in the video is that the damage rolls on the gloves for the special weapon types, such as marksman rifle damage, assault rifle damage, pistol damage, those type of things, it will change from a flat number to a percentage number of damage. This is a good thing because it means that high RPM weapons will no longer be the thing to go for per se. However, it is also most likely going to be a nerf to that stat roll because just as with the percentage damage rolls on a gear set, such as the 8% damage from the Predator's Mark and the extra damage from a Lone Star, these percentage based values will be additive instead of multiplicative. The importance of that is something we already talked about in a previous video, so I'm not going to go over that again, but basically it will be less important to get the weapon damage rolls on the gloves now. Again, this is not a bad thing per se, seeing how weapon damage on gloves has always always been a must pick it's always been the thing to go for and that is going to change with this update so that's the thing we know right now now what do these things have to do with skill haste 
Not a whole lot, really. Apart from the fact that in patch 1.7, the three most powerful stats that you could get on your gear used to be health, flat weapon damage bonuses on those gloves, and skill haste, with skill haste arguably being the most important one for many builds. And with the other two stats falling back to be more in line with the rest of the options, skill haste is going to rise to heights that you probably can't really imagine right now. So why is skill haste so powerful? Well, for one, it's because it reduces your cooldowns of your skills, and skills are a very powerful thing in the Division. But also because Skill Haste works in a very similar way to how Armor works in the Division. That sounds weird, but just wait until you see this. Just as with Armor, the more Skill Haste that you get on your gear, the stronger that Skill Haste gets. Let's take this 40 second cooldown of my heal as an example. If I add 10% Skill Haste to that, that means that 4 seconds will be taken off my cooldown. You know, because 10% of 40 is 4, so we just simply subtract the 4, that's how skill haste works. And in that situation we would be left with 36 seconds. But now we have the 36 seconds and we take another 10% of skill haste on our build. Except if you think about it for a second you can actually see that the second time we added that 10% of skill haste we subtracted more than 10% off of our cooldown. Because 4 seconds off of 36 seconds that's going to be 11.11%. .11%. Do that again when you have 32 and you end up with a 12.5% reduction and so on and on and on. This whole thing, it is causing players that spec a lot into skill haste, especially somebody with heavy electronics as well, to gain a lot more power over somebody who doesn't spec into skill haste so much that it actually becomes a mandatory thing to pick up on things such as the gear mods, the chest piece and even the gloves. And it's going to be an even more important thing in patch 1.8 when it's not competing with health anymore or weapon type damage anymore. So what do we do about this? Do we just change up the whole formula, change up the whole way that skill haste works? Sure, we could. But uh, I don't think there's enough time to do that for patch 1.8. Nor do I think it's really the optimal solution. I think what is far easier to do is to simply lower the amount of total skill haste that players can get from their gear. If it was up to me, I would change the value amounts on the gear pieces to something like this, where the player could only get a total of 26% from their gear, and then I would also change the Tactician's 2 piece to 10% and swap it around with the 3 piece so that the 10% skill power is now the 2 piece. With that, I would also reduce the hard cap down to 40% from 50% so that even with buffs such as the ammo box and the recharger smart cover, you would not be able to go back to those extreme amounts. Admittedly, this is something that I've suggested before and it wasn't received in a very positive way by the whole community. You know, a lot of people were saying that I was trying to kill the hybrid builds and the skill builds and whatnot and it may have been the way that I explained it back then. Or it may have just been the fact that a lot of people just don't agree with me, but I can put it on black and white right now. You know, remember this moment in my video? Because I'm willing to put money on it. I'm gonna say that if we do not do something with skill haste on the PTS of patch 1.8, next patch is going to be the patch where everybody is going to run skill haste on every single build ever. And it's also going to be the patch where the tactician may have a reappearance because when the classified tactician is introduced and it's going to give us a five piece bonus with even more skill haste and more skill power while also allowing us to spec more into stamina with the new stamina scaling for more toughness well i'm just i'm just gonna sit here and see what happens you know and if you're worrying about your skill builds not being viable anymore because of this change if that is the reason that you disagree with all of this well then i've got the simple solution for you Simply reduce the base cooldowns of the skills in the game a little bit to compensate for the fact that you cannot get as much skill haste anymore. I'm not trying to nerf the skills or the skill players here. The target goal with this change is to make it so that the skill haste rolls fall more in line with the rest of the stat rolls in terms of player power. I don't want one thing to be a lot more powerful than the other. That's the goal here. But that's, that's all I'm going to say about skill haste because the video is going to talk about more things than just that. So let's move on to... The next thing, which is headshot damage in PvP. Most of you have probably already noticed that since patch 1.6, your headshots aren't that impactful anymore. Now, I believe that this was an intentional change by the developers that they've made to reduce the skill gap in PvP. I am personally not a big fan of this change, but I feel like that I'm not even the right person to talk about this because I am, you know, all things considered, a fairly skilled player in this game and thus Anything that would lower my ability to separate myself from the average player would be something that I could call a bad change. You know, when I'm talking about this, there's an inherent bias there. So I'm not going to judge over this and tell you whether that was a good change or a bad change for players overall. 
However, there are some things going on with the headshots in PvP where the match just doesn't add up, and I would at least like to take a look at that with this video. For those that don't know, the Division has a special multiplier for headshot damage in PvP. It is currently set to 0.8, so that means that if you have 100% headshot damage on your weapon, the game actually acts as if you only have 80%. And taking in mind just how much headshot damage we can actually get on our weapons in the Division, this in itself isn't actually such a bad feature per se. It's all a matter of balance, right? It allows the game to have high headshot damage rolls with certain weapons for PvE purposes while not making it completely overpowered in PvP. The thing is though is that this multiplier alone is not the whole picture. When you land a headshot in PvP, it isn't just the headshot damage that is reduced, but also the base damage of the weapon that is reduced by that 0.8 multiplier. So in theory, if you had a weapon with 0% extra headshot damage, your bullets would actually do less damage on the head than on the body. In practice, this doesn't really ever happen, because all the weapons always come with a base headshot damage amount, SMGs have 50%, assault rifles have 75%, but I still do believe that that last part, where the base damage also gets reduced, is a pretty big pitfall to any headshot related build, especially considering that a build that focuses a lot around crit does not suffer from this same problem. Getting a critical hit on somebody, either on the body or on the head, it's going to do the damage for the full amount, without any multipliers or modifiers to the base damage or to the crit damage. And this is a pretty big effect on the game. For example, I've got this unmodded SMG here with 50% headshot damage and 25% critical hit damage. If you look at this, you would expect that even with the multiplier to headshot damage in PvP, getting a headshot would still be worth it. At least it would hit harder than getting a critical hit. But if you would think that, you would be mistaken, because a headshot with this weapon results in 4208 damage on this player, while a critical hit on the body hits for 4384. That's a difference of almost 200 per bullet, while remember, our headshot damage was twice the amount of our critical hit damage. And again, to add insult to injury, if you actually manage to land a critical hit headshot, the game does give the base damage and the headshot damage that 0.8 multiplier, however, the critical hit damage does not go through that same multiplier and still applies for the full damage amount as if the base damage was never reduced in the first place. So no matter where you hit with the critical hit, it's always going to apply for the full 100%. This results in very odd scenarios where specking into critical hit damage on a headshot sniper rifle build is actually more effective than going with headshot damage on your sniper and it pushes us in a meta where it is all about the body shots, it's all about the hip fire, and it's all about stacking as much crit as possible and I do believe and that is a thing that frustrates a big part of the player base as well, at least on the PvP side of things. Now would I say that the problem here is headshot damage, or is it critical hit damage? I think the answer to that question is a really difficult one, and you can't really say with 100% certainty. But I do know that in order to balance these things out, we need to at least do either one of two things. We can either remove or reduce the base damage multiplier that is applied to weapons when hitting headshots, or we can add a separate PvP modifier for critical hits, similar to how we have it with the headshots. Personally, I would actually prefer to go for the latter option to get a separate critical hit multiplier in PvP first up, because that also evens out the damage differences between crits, headshots and body shots, and that will in turn result in a more predictable time to kill, making things easier to balance in the future. But doing that would also make builds such as the one-shot that I built that I created just a little bit less lethal and make those type of builds also a bit more fun to play against as it may give players time to react before getting shot down. And remember guys, nerfing critical hit damage in PvP it is a two-way street as well. If Deadeye isn't going to hit us hard anymore, then we could also think about removing some of those handicaps again, such as uh, the fact that we have to use cover to get the 100% crit chance. And, as you'll see later into the video, we can also up the critical hit damage rolls on the knee pads and on the backpack just a little bit to make those rolls also a bit more viable. I don't think either of these adjustments have to be too drastic, uh, just a few decimals here and there would make worlds of a difference in terms of balance, and I don't think it would hurt at least trying this out on the PTS for one week or so. That is my take on headshot damage though, which means that we're getting to the last part of the video, which is actually the most simple part, because we're simply going to look at different stat rolls on the gear pieces and talk about a few which I believe could use some adjustments, starting off with the chest piece. As you can see, I've already taken the skill haste change that I talked about earlier in this video into consideration. That is the most important one in my opinion. If that one doesn't go through, then looking at the other ones is also kind of a waste of time. But anyway, 
let's start off with looking at all resist. All resist is a stat that reduces the duration of every status effect applied to the player. So in theory, 100% uh, all resistance would mean that the player cannot be stunned, cannot be put on fire, cannot be disrupted and any of that stuff anymore, which sounds very, very powerful. And it can be a very cool thing to include into any given build. You know, think about a healer that cannot be EMP'd, for example. However, with the fact that you can pretty much cleanse every status effect apart from a stun with a medkit now, and with the fact that the values on these stat rolls are in such low amounts, I mean 4%, please, no one's ever going to take that, I think that this is just a wasted stat at this point. If you really want to motivate players to make builds around these type of things, where you get the utility of not being able to get stunned, I think that uh, players need to be able to get 100% on a stat like this. Or at least get very close to it, so that when they actually get stunned, it doesn't take 3 seconds for them to get out of the stun, but only half a second. In such a case, then yeah, players are gonna pick this up, but with 4%? No. No way, no way. For this stat, I would actually suggest upping all these values by a whole lot, and for the chest piece, I would start off giving them a full 15%. As for the mask, taking the all resist change into consideration as well, I got nothing really to talk about here, it looks pretty good, every stat is valuable, so we end up with the knee pads, and I do have a couple of comments to make here. First up, there's a difference here between skill power and health. I don't really know why this is, both electronics and stamina give the player 30 health or skill power per point, assuming that uh, the new change to stamina goes through. So what is the reason that the health roll here is higher than the skill power roll? For the true min-maxer, it pretty much means that there is only one option if you want to choose between those two, and that's going to be health. So either you have to reduce the health roll to match the skill power, or increase the skill power to match the health roll. It's what you want to go with, it doesn't really matter, just make sure that these two values are identical. Second up, the enemy armor damage, the 3 to 4%, it is a laughably low amount. If you ever want players to pick this up, you're going to have to at least match it with the suggested value on the mask or the chest piece, the 6.5 to 8%, especially considering how much it is competing with as well. But that's still not all I want to look at for the knee pads, because I also want to give critical hit damage a little bump up from a maximum of 9%, to maybe 11 or 12%. I'm of course taking the suggested change to critical hit damage in PvP into consideration, you know, the thing that I talked about with the separate critical hit damage multiplier. And if I take in mind that this critical hit damage roll on the knee pads has always been a little bit underwhelming, I think upping this a little bit cannot hurt at all. On the backpack, I got nothing to say that I haven't already said. Gloves, got nothing more to say. And the same goes for the holster with all the balance changes incoming and all the things that I already suggested in the video. Everything seems to already be on a sort of equal level. The mods are a different story though, because I would first up straight up remove the signature skill resource gain roll from the stat pool or replace it with something like a little bit of enemy armor damage if removing would mess up the current system. Oh, and also one and last thing, I would actually increase the crit chance rolls from 1% to 1.5% to kind of compensate for the crit multiplier we added in PvP, but also because these rolls have generally been pretty underwhelming in the past. And that would be my complete stat roll balance pass for patch 1.8. Now, am I saying that this is gonna be perfect? Uh, probably not. Some of these stats will still be picked way more often than others, but at least we will not be stuck with any dead stats or any must-haves, making the RNG a lot worse. With this, I believe that everything will at least have some use in some niche builds, but also in some more common builds. And I believe that this way, they're all of relative strength to each other. As you can see, it was a pretty lengthy video, but most of the suggested changes are actually pretty minimal. Just a couple of decimals here and there, just a couple of very small number changes. That is all that is required, simply flip a few numbers up and down. Maybe in practice it's a lot harder than what I'm proposing here, maybe there are some things that I'm overlooking. Theory crafting, of course, only gets you so far, but if it was up to me, this is how week one of the patch 1.8 PTS would look like. Whatever way it goes though, I do want to say that I'm already pretty happy with some of the progression towards true balance that has been done this patch. Stamina back to 30 health per point, the damage rolls on the gloves changing to percentage based numbers. I really, really like both of those things. So don't take this video the wrong way if you're a developer and you're watching this. It's just, man, I I don't know. I'm, I'm a perfectionist and I apparently care enough about this game to act as if it's my own game. So apologies for the attitude, I guess. I shouldn't be telling the devs how to do their game as if I always know it better, you know? It's just, I can't help myself, man. It's just the shit that I do nowadays instead of build videos. So take it for what it is. Take this video as my calculated opinion, maybe. Yeah, 
You know what? Let's go with that. It's my opinion. That's it. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. If you want to discuss all this stuff, you know where to find me. And hopefully I will also see you all in the next video. Bye.